So we're continuing our discussion about different areas of management by looking at managing the value chain. And in fact, as we move through the history of management, we are in the more quantitative stage. So where we start to have computers allowing us to analyze data, and this will lead us into quality and efficiency measures. And we're looking at a more systems approach. So this is about the 1950s to 1970s period of time where we're looking at more holistic view of our operations, of our organization. We're looking at how not just how we make things, how our operations are, our processes, but how it ties to everything else. So we talked in our previous videos and we did strategic planning about how we have to consider the environment, uh, right? So that could be political, that could be economical, that could be social. But these are things external to the organization that are impacting it. And now we're going to continue looking at that expansion of considering that bigger picture and how all the parts work together by looking at the parts within the organization and then expanding that to the greater supply chain and the businesses that we buy and sell things. Uh, we buy things from and sell things to. So we'll start by looking at the value chain. So when we talk about value added, we're talking about going from inputs. So these are our people. These are our raw materials, our building, our machines going from those inputs and adding value. So we're providing some kind of value added to the customer by transforming those inputs into outputs to make some particular good or service. So if we're making Coca-Cola, for example, our inputs are going to be our labor, we're going to have bottling equipment, we're going to have our aluminum cans, our uh, water and coloring, sugar, those are all the inputs that get transformed and turned into Coca-Cola. And there are different types of transformations. We talked about this in a previous video, but we'll see if you can remember what those are. And if you're a hair salon, your inputs are going to be the chair and the scissors and your uh, expertise of those who are the hairstylists. We have the customer, those inputs then get transformed into the output in terms of a new hairstyle. So we're looking at value added, the difference between the cost of the inputs and the value or price of the output. So we need a transformation. If we are making something, like we're making a can of Coca-Cola, that is a physical transformation. We're taking those inputs and turning them into something new. Our company, though, might provide transport or we might store things in warehouses. So we're not making things, but we are moving things. And so the transformation, the value we're adding is locational. We might add value by making goods that we didn't make and maybe we didn't even move available where the customer is. So when you think about the bay, when you think about um the other clothing shops, right, in the mall, this is retail, and they are they didn't make the clothing, but they're making it available <laughs> Excuse me. where the customer is. Now, you can also add value by providing entertainment. So you make people laugh, you make people cry. That's a psychological transformation. You're changing their mind. Maybe you're a spa and you make people feel... Um, their skin feels smoother. Maybe you are a doctor's office and you fix a broken arm. If you're changing the being, then we have a physiological transformation. And if your company is maybe a radio station or a newspaper, you add value by providing knowledge and communication. So you have an informative transformation. So there are different ways to add value. Physical, make something. Locational, move something. Exchange, make it available where the customer is. Physiological, change the being. Psychological, change the mind. Informative, provide knowledge. So when we look at the process, when we go from inputs to outputs, we want to look at all of the pieces of the value chain and look at how they are adding value. So our value chain is going to be the internal activities that transform those inputs to outputs. And when it comes to the value chain, we're using a model from Porter. And you'll recall Porter, Michael Porter, uh, a management professor at Harvard. And we've talked about a number of his different contributions to management. We have Porter's five forces when we were doing our strategic planning. We had Porter's four generic strategies as we looked at developing that strategic plan. And today we're looking at the value chain, which that term came from Porter. 
So Porter's value chain looks at those processes where we go from inputs to outputs. And there are primary activities and support activities. So our primary activity is going to be inbound logistics. We need to bring in the materials that we need. A support activity is going to be procurement. That is uh, finding the supplier, coordinating, making that order so that it can come in. So procurement is finding the supplier and, and ordering the materials. And then inbound logistics is bringing those materials in. We then use those materials, those inputs, to do our transformation. So we have operations, and tied to those operations, we will have a process flow diagram. So we talked in a previous video about creating a process flow diagram. So just recall that your process flow diagram starts and ends with a circle. Activities are squares. Any decisions are diamonds. If you are bringing in materials in terms of inputs, that's a triangle. And if your input is information, then it's a parallelogram. So this is the example we looked at before in terms of a process flow diagram, if you were perhaps to order lunch for you and your friends. When we are looking at this as part of our value chain, we need to go through each of the steps in our process flow diagram and look at what is the importance of each of these activities. How is it impacting cost? How is it impacting our ability to be unique or different? And that goes back to Porter's generic strategies. You'll remember Porter's generic strategies was cost leadership. So we can have lower costs, which means lower prices for our customer, or we can have differentiation. We can be unique and different. And then you'll remember from Porter's strategies that there is also a focus version of cost leadership and differentiation where your cost leadership or differentiation is to a specific niche or target market. So as we go through our value chain, we want to look at how does each of these activities contribute to our ability to be a cost leader or to provide something that's unique, better quality or different from the competition. Are there other opportunities to reduce costs or add value to our customers? So we continue to look at the primary activities on the Porter's value chain. We need to receive, store, and have those raw materials for that process as operations. Then we need a way to distribute our finished product uh, to the customers. And we also need marketing and sales. So how are we going to communicate with our customers about our products? And so we talked before in terms of the four Ps. And what were the four Ps? They were price, product, promotion and place, or we can alternatively look at save, right? So here we are looking at education, value, okay? And we are looking at, oh my goodness, my mind has gone blank. <laughs> All right, what were the pieces to save? They were solution, access, value and education. So product was replaced by solution, place was replaced by access, price by value, and promotion by education. So when we look at marketing and sales, we need to make decisions about how we're going to communicate with our customers as well as the price that we're selling it for. And then we have service after the sale. So we're looking at the ability to maintain the product's performance. Do we have uh, any kind of warranty or after sale service. This also includes any kind of installation, training, maintenance that we may provide. So at each part of the value chain, we need to look at how does it add to our cost leadership or to our ability to differentiate our product. And not only do we have our primary activities, but we also have our support activities. We talked already about procurement is getting those raw materials. We also have our human resource management. We've had a number of videos talking about how we motivate and lead our team. And then throughout the semester, we've been talking about technology that we might use either in production. So we might automate some of our operations, but we can also use technology in terms of our marketing and sales with our customer relationship management. We can use technology in terms of recruitment and training. 
So all of those support the ability to make our good, provide our service, get it to our customer. And so we need to look at, are all of those things adding value? Are they helping to keep costs lower or are they helping us, helping us be unique? And then we also have our infrastructure. We talked earlier this semester about organizational structure and that's chain of command, span of control, how are decisions made at what level. All of those components will help determine the value we're adding for the customer. So if you are doing a value chain analysis, you first must determine whether your competitive advantage is going to be a cost leadership strategy or is going to be a differentiation strategy, tying back to those generic strategies from Porter. If we are going to go with a cost advantage, this is what Amazon, Walmart, McDonald's, Ford, and Toyota do. The first thing we need to do is identify those primary and support activities like we just looked at. Okay, so we need to figure out what are the inbound logistics, the outbound, what are we doing in terms of marketing and sales? How are we doing procurement? How are we recruiting and retaining our workers? Then for each of those, we go through and identify the cost drivers. What is the most expensive aspect of each part of the value chain? And what are the links between the different activities, between the different parts of the value chain? Are there opportunities for reducing costs? So can we streamline our process? So maybe simplify the process flow diagram. Maybe we're going to automate parts of the process. Often for organizations, the most cost uh, for an organization are its people. You know, 70 to 80% of cost for most organizations is salaries of all of the workers. So are there ways to be more efficient in our production process? And not just in operations, but in getting the raw materials, sending out the finished product, marketing and sales, and our service after the sale. If we have a more differentiated strategy, more like Apple, Google, Samsung, Starbucks, we recognize that by being unique, we can actually charge a higher price for our products. But that's only going to be the case as long as we are seen to be different, as long as we have value added to the customer. So again, we go through the primary and support activities, and we're identifying all of the activities that add value to the customer. And for each part of that value chain, we evaluate the differentiation strategies that help add value to the customer. So what makes us different in the way that we use our materials, in the steps we take to provide our good or service, in the way that we promote in our service after the sale. After the sale. So each of these pieces should be adding value and making us unique or different. So perhaps we can focus on quality. How can we improve quality in terms of what we bring in and our procurement process? in the design of our product, in the distribution of our product, uh, how can we make it higher quality so that we are different from the competition. So we're looking for sustainable differences and I encourage you to look back at the video we have on VRIO, looking at the resources that create sustainable competitive advantages for organizations. <clears throat> So if we were to look at, for example, Tim Horton's value chain analysis, we would look at, okay, what are the inbound logistics? So who is providing the materials for Tim Horton's? Where do we get the coffee? Where are we getting um, our cups and wrappers for the food that we provide? Where are we getting our, our bagels and donuts? And then we look at our operations. So one of the things that Tim Hortons has done, because they have a strategy that is about cost, is that instead of baking the donuts fully in-house, where each location would then have to have, in their operations, they'd have to have a full kitchen. Instead, what they're doing is par-baking. So they are pre-baking some of their uh, donuts and food products. Then they are bringing them in. And then in the operations, the operation, the process is a lot simpler because you're just finishing off or heating the product. And so that helps it in terms of less cost and in our infrastructure, in terms of where what we design and build for uh, our Tim Hortons location. 
And so we're able to streamline the process and lower costs to keep the prices low for the customer. So if we're doing our value chain analysis for Tim Hortons, we looked what are the primary and support activities. We could think, for example, in terms of how we're getting our product to the customers. So a lot of that involves the drive through window. And we need to look at what adds value to the customer, what are the biggest cost drivers for our activities, identify the links between the activities and ways to reduce cost. So are there ways as we manage our drive through window, so part of that outbound operations and outbound logistics, getting it to the customer, are there ways to make that more efficient? What we're seeing right now with places like McDonald's and Tim Hortons is more and more they'll have two ordering locations. So they have a drive through that goes to a single window, but there are two places where you can put in your order and then it merges together. So the idea here is we're being more efficient uh, in terms of the order, getting the orders in so they can get working on them right away. Um, and there's less time going through the drive through. So we would go through the value chain, whether we were focusing on a cost leadership or a differentiation strategy, looking at the individual components and are there ways to reduce costs or alternatively, are there ways to increase differentiation? One more thing we'll look at before we'll leave this uh, topic is that of a knowledge intensive firm. So a KIF or a knowledge intensive firm is an organization that is primarily focused on the human capital or expertise of its employees. And so they're not making a good like Coca-Cola. The service they're providing is that they are providing ideas. So their focus is to help other organizations solve complex problems and provide solutions. You can see this with pharmaceutical companies, health biotech, new materials, telecommunications, technology, software, medical equipment, and avionics. Essentially, we need new innovative ideas for ways to make products, uh, for how to use new technology. And so knowledge intensive firms are ones that have the human capital and expertise that very few organizations have. So their competitive advantage here uh, is that know-how and they create market value through knowledge, through that innovation, initiative, and building competence. So if we were to look at a similar diagram to that value chain, but specific to knowledge intensive firms, you'll see that the processes are about identifying information, acquiring information, uh, storing information, and then disseminating that information to the particular client, refining it, applying it, so providing people with the information that they need. So we go through the same process with a knowledge intensive firm as we do with other types of companies in terms of our analysis here, looking at where is value added and how can we sustain that differentiation. So how are we collecting that information? How are we disseminating that information? What is it that our customers are looking for? So how responsive are we? How creative are we? Uh, and looking at where in each part of this process uh, we are adding the most value to the customer.